Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be having a look at particle effects and what I've got here is um, just like a basic fireball and I've got a basic frost ball or frost attack type thing. Um, obviously these are based on magic spells. Um, really easy to make and as you can see the way that they made the they've got a nice trail behind them and they also illuminate the surroundings and no matter where you go obviously you can you can fire these I'll show you how to basically set them up to fire like this um, but then ultimately how you put this in your games up completely up to you um, yeah and that's it so let's jump into it okay so what we've got here is we've just got a basic uh, third person template um, so essentially you could use any template you want um, in the example video I used a top-down template um, and then I just built on top of that with just some asset packs um, but essentially yeah I use I, I like to I like to consider this like magic spells um, you know but this particle effect can be used for absolutely anything um, it, it doesn't have to be a fireball or anything like that but um, yeah, you can you can you can swap these out for anything, I guess. Um, I guess if you use like a rocket sprite, you could do a rocket or something like that. Yeah, but I'll leave that up to you. Um, right. So with the template created, uh, what I'm going to do is just go to the contents folder and let's just make a new folder for particles. So with that created, uh, let's just go into it. And essentially, um, what I'll do, I'll just quickly explain the sort of like the levels of this. So the particle system which handles the animation the effect type thing so that that's going to be like how big the particle is how many of them spawn in the same place what color they should be what color they should be over time the movement of them all of that is handled by the particle system now the particle itself is sort of like a shape um, it stems from a basic shape or uh, multiple basic shapes and stuff like that so that stems from a, a, a material which has a texture in it now a texture is just um, an input image that you've created or downloaded whichever one um, which gives it a basic shape now that's the thing we're going to make first and then we'll move on to the system uh, and that keeps it nice and simple so to start with if we just right click and we want to create a material I'm just going to call this M underscore uh, fireball shape uh, and then with that just double click and let's get into it so once you've opened that up you'll be greeted with this and at the moment this is just sort of like the outputs of a basic material but an opaque material. You can see some of these are greyed out. Now we need to access the opacity mask. Eh, mask. To do that, we need to go down here and go to the blend mode. Now ours is going to be masked because we're going to have a white shape on a black background, and we want the black to be masked out as transparent. So the masked blend mode allows us to do that with the opacity mask. So with that being said we now need a texture very simply if we type in texture sample uh, the one highlighted should be texture shampoo, sample and you'll be given this node so this node has loads of inputs and outputs um, but essentially we're only interested in the RGB and the RGBA um, and here this black square this is where our sample is going to be but we have to create it first so as you can see on the bottom left here, this is waiting for a sample, it's saying none, you know, and essentially we could plug in the UE4 uh, logo, um, but I want to show you how you could, you, you know, you can make something yourself and plug that in here and give it character. Um, so, I'm going to need to use an external program for that. Now, you've got a couple of choices here. You could use something like Photoshop or GIMP, which is this is GIMP this is basically like a free version of Photoshop but it's it, you know it's not quite the same it's obviously different um, but there is a website um, now this website is called Pixlr um, now a long time ago this used to be on the road for being sort of like an online version of Photoshop but it seems that over the last couple of years or well I'm not too sure when they changed but definitely within the last couple of years they've, they've changed into this sort of like editor and designer type thing 
but we can still get the desired effect from it. So I'm just going to press create new and this is the, the, the name is not important put whatever you want but the width and height is quite important if we put 128 and 128 for the width and height um, this is what we're going to use as our base size for our particle now before you carry on and press create let's go to background and let's just click on this white block here and let's just set it to a black color you'll know that you're definitely on black because you'll have all zeros across across here and then you can hit create so now you're just presented with your black cube um, in the top left hand corner you've got a range and style if you click on that there's actually a quick add option and one of them shape if you click on that you can see that it now gives you this grey cube if you click on the fill colour and set this to white we want it to be white I think that should be all F's yep so the hash is F F F F F F <laughs> um, yeah so one, once that's set let, let's just chill that in there close that down and then obviously here we've got rectangle rounded rectangle circle but then custom shape now this has some really good custom shapes now <laughs> this is automatically picked the one that I've picked previously but you've got a, a really big list here well, I won't say really big but there's definitely enough to choose from um, now looking at these bottom ones they look kind of flamey you might think you know that that'll be a good shape to use but um, I'm going to stick to this shape here, which is, I think, this one. Uh, no, that one's slightly different. Either way, that'll work. Um, which one did I use, actually? Uh, I think I used that one. But you know what? This one, this one works, too. So we'll, we'll pick this one. Um, and then I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. So I just dragged it right onto the corner until you see these pink lines. You know, if you just want to follow me exact. But there isn't an exact science for this. And then you want to center it, and you'll know if it's centered because these pink lines will pop up and um, give you a cross. You let go, and that's, that's really your particle texture created. So now what you want to do is just press save, and hit PNG. The reason we pick PNG is because the file size is just slightly smaller, and if you've got a lot of these in your game, you, you want them slightly smaller. Um, you know, you do lose... A mild bit of uh, quality but this isn't going to matter because we're going to be turning it into a particle effect hit save now I already made one um, I'm just going to save over this as fireball I'm just going to replace it yep you're just going to save that uh, you do get an advert but for whatever reason this is blocked but yeah but at this point this website's past its use now so we can just minimize that and uh, minimize GIMP but yeah you can use any any program you want for that as long as you can make that sort of black and white shape of it. So now with your sample, um, let's click uh, textures on the left hand side and instead of, uh, oh no, sorry, we need to import it, my bad. Um, go back to your, your example map and in your particle folder, right click and at the top you've got import asset, import to game particles because that's where it's going and then you want to select your fireball PNG that you created. Right, now we can go back to the shape click your sample and then under texture on the left I'm going to go to none and go to fireball there we go so um, so with that being said just bear with me a sec I've just actually turned my other screen off by accident <laughs> okay right I sorted the screen out um, essentially my recording software is on the other screen so with the screen going off um, it was actually difficult for me to pause it <laughs> Anyway, where was we? So we've, we've just put our texture in, in, this, uh, in this sample here. So now what we can do, we can actually plug the RGBA, which is going to be the alpha, which basically it determines what's black and what's white. You know, um, usually within a range, um, one would be, I think white and zero would be black, but anyway, that, that doesn't matter. If we plug this into the opacity mask here, Actually, no, I'm not going to do that yet. Um, let, let, let's let's do this one first because that, that, that it, if I plug this in last, it'll give you a better understanding of what it does. Um, right, so obviously we've got a white shape at the moment and you know we, we're probably not going to want our particle to be white. Um, so we're going to need some color being introduced into this. So if we just plug this into here, it'd be white forever. Now, the really good thing is the particle system can determine what color something is. And what's really good about this material node is if we type in particle, oh, 
particle and then color under the particles heading not the constants heading particles if you click on the particle color you'll see here you get this red node which is input data now essentially what happens is when we plug this material this whole material into a particle system it allows the particle system to override what color this sample is uh, which is really cool but for, for the color to go from here to this sample we need to almost add these together but we actually do it through a multiply so if you hold M on the keyboard um, you can click and that'll give you the multiply node alternatively you can right click and type in multiply but M on the keyboard is a, is a bit of a shortcut and we want to take this top one here this is like all these colors wrapped into one node plug that into that and then this one's the same let's plug that into B and then we can pop that into the base color now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this uh, preview update just before I proceed because uh, you'll get a good understanding of what this RGBA is going to do right so as you can see now we can see that our shape is kind of wrapped around this ball so it kind of looks almost like a, a fireball but you know it's not going to be 3d um, so uh, anyway but you can see where the white and the black is so because we've got because we've set our material to be masked um, we get this opacity mask node and obviously whatever's black is considered not visible um, because it's zero it, 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 don't worry about that but just, just know that whatever's black on your texture will be considered invisible or transparent um, so when we plug this in you'll notice that this preview updates where only the white is visible and whatever's black is is made invisible so there you can go there you go you can see from behind obviously there's it's all black this so it's invisible but from the front you've got this nice um, sort of jagged shape and you can see even that the shadows updated to, to reflect that um, to reflect that uh, pun intended um, right so that, that's actually our material created so now we can go ahead and chuck this into a particle effect and let's make it look a bit better so I'm just gonna hit save before I continue and this does take a little bit for me um, so yeah once that's done we can carry on okay so that's now done so we've got our fireball texture we've got our fireball material um, now we need to make a particle system uh, let's call this um, I'm gonna call it PS for particle system underscore uh, fireball awesome and then just double click it and that'll open up the particle system I'm just gonna tag this to the top right particle system so this will um, this will look kind of strange to you if you've never used one before but essentially you've got where, where all this black space is you can add in new particle emitters you know which can all layer on top of each other uh, and this is we're going to use that to our advantage I've just clicked on this little tick at the top just to disable them because at the moment I've we've got free particle systems running um, we are going to use free particle systems actually but I'll tell you what I'll just delete them for now but yeah you can have as many as you want so you can layer up and you can slightly change your textures you can put different textures in for each emitter and you can really layer these up to be uh, you know a, a, an amazing particle system but uh, I'm just going to keep this one simple for now and we're going to use the same texture throughout so first things first you've got if you click on the actual particle emitter itself you get some settings but we're not actually going to change this underneath the required um, heading there are some settings that we are going to change and uh, I'll tell you what let's just get to it so at the moment there's a default particle which is just this weird widget thing that they've got floating around if we change that default particle you can now see under materials we've got m underscore fireball shape that's the one we've just made so if we click on that oh it disappears now obviously I've got some compiling shaders at the moment but um, the lighting's a little bit different because our shape's got a funny angle to it 
If we click and drag, I'm actually rotating around the uh, the scene. Oh, and there you go. You've got to you've got to click and drag and rotate around until you get to the point where your particle system is kind of in front of you. So, if you look at this uh, this preview now, as you can see, we've just got loads of little spiky star shapes that we've we've just made, all sort of bundling off off top of each other. Um, so now we actually need to go through these settings and let's mess around with it and let's let's get this set up. So I'm just going to get a sip of water and then I'll be straight back. Okay, so I've had some juice now. Right, so as we go through this, I am going to go back and forward between this project and another. The other one's on another screen. Um, that's just so then I don't miss anything. Um, these particle systems can be quite um, detail orientated, let's say. There's, there's quite a lot within them um, and I wouldn't want to miss something and have to sort of you know, fix that at the end. I, I wouldn't want to do that. So just for the sake of it, I'm just going to go through another... I'm going to keep two projects side by side um, just to make sure that I'm doing this correctly for, for you. Um, okay, and I, I won't want to miss anything. So, right, what we've done now is we've gone from the required tab because we don't actually need to change anything in here except the material that's sort of running the show. Um, next, we need to adjust the spawn rate because at the moment we've got tons just like firing out all over the place and you might not want to do that. You might want a single one. You might want a couple. Um, you know, you, you, you can really change this. So you've got the rate. So this could be set to like a constant value. You can set it to 10. So at a given time, only 10 particles are spawned at a time. You know, you could put it as one. So then when one dies, another one spawns, you know. 20 actually, as a default value, is probably enough because it gives almost like a burning. If you imagine these as like glowing orange, um, it almost suggests like a, as it's traveling, like a glowing um, effect to it. And then you've got rate scale. Now the rate scale is over time what's going to happen. <laughs> it goes fucking, it goes crazy. Um, so do we get more of them over time? How does that, how does the rate change over time? Uh, so over time that can double yeah so we could have 40 there anyway we're gonna leave that as one um, scroll down we've got burst scale and uh, this should be I think one as well um, yep let's leave that as one and that's it for, for that one Lifetime, don't think I changed lifetime. Let's just double check. Distribution, so it should be under uh, float uniform and then minimax is one and one. Um, yep, so I don't think that one's been changed. Initial size, start size, vector uniform. Uh, let's just double check. Right. So what we've got here is you, you could pick whatever size you want to start with. Um, you may prefer to adjust this after you've created your particle system and you've fired it um, because you'll get probably more of an appreciation of what size it is. Um, for mine, I actually set this to 75 across the board. Let's get this a bit bigger. So you can set a min and a max, by the way. You, know, you can have 25, 25, 25, and it'll each one will randomly generate a size between these two values um, but we're actually going to create three particle emitters layered on top of each other to give an effect like this um, so for, the, for, for this example let's just sorry for this emitter let's leave it at 75 and that's it for the size um, velocity let's just double check velocity so we've got start velocity and velocity radial. I don't think I changed the radial, but I may have changed this one. Um, this one's going to be minus 10. 
I don't want it to be as crazy uh, flying up. I, I almost want it to be bundled because I'm going to handle um, the, handle the rest myself. Yeah, and let's just check the radial uh, velocity. I don't, I, again, I don't think I changed this one. No, I didn't. Next, we've got color over life. Um, this one we definitely changed. So, color over life, distribution, constant curve. Um, so at the moment we've got two points, which we we we, we want, and we're going to break down. So. Under, you need to drop down all these headers, distribution, constant curve, points, zero, and then one. Um, and this is going to be a color that it starts from and ends up going to. So essentially, this is zero and one is, zero is its birth. Um, so when, you, when your particle is created, um, it's going to be this color. Um, and once it ends or what color should it be when it arrives at its death um, so if we change this from white to green you can see now in the preview it's it's going to start from that white color and get to to green as it as it gets up there so what we actually want to do is we want to change this to almost like a yellow and then we want to end on you know like a red Oh, that's pink. Better not go for pink. Let's just manually set this to zero. So here we go from yellow to a red. Um, I'm actually going to change that yellow to more of an orange. Yeah, can I get a bit darker, maybe? Yeah, that looks that looks that looks okay. I guess. Um, and um, for the number one, the actual in value, I don't want it to be as sharp, so I'm just going to set this to 0 0.6. Now that gives you more of a blend. Um, so for the majority of its life, it's going to be the red, um, which gives us this nice little effect. And let me just double check, I've not forgot any other settings. Um, Let me just double check. Okay, I don't think I changed this one. I think this is just default. The, the reason that this is difficult to, to continue with is because every project, for whatever reason, even if you've not changed it, comes up with these um, reset to default arrows. And it really does throw you. As you're making these um, particles, these lines really throw you to think like, did I change it? Have I changed it? But um, no, just double check in here. I, I, I haven't changed that. So the only ones that we are going to change is the color over life, and you've got these. Now that's it. Now that isn't it, actually, because if you, th this list of options here isn't the only things that you can change. If you right click in this emitter, you've got a list here of tons of things that you can add. Now, the one that we want to change is um, size by life, but you can change it like the speed of it, how it changes, does it get bigger as it goes faster, does it get smaller as it goes faster, um, but we want to change its size as it gets older. So each particle has a life cycle, we want it to change as it, as it gets through that. Uh, life multiplier, distribution, constant curve, points. And then we've got the zero and the one again. So this is going to be its size at the beginning of its life, and this is going to be the size at the end of its life. And at the moment, they're set exactly the same, um, but we're going to we're going to want to change that. We want it to half its size by the time it dies. Um, so for the out value of zero, that's going to remain at one. But for the out value of the one uh, or the you know its whole life, we want to set that to 0 0.5. So now, as you can see, this is more of a, it, it, it's scooping into more of a flame because, it, it, you know, most of the particles are getting smaller as it gets older, giving us this burning uh, appearance, if you will. Um, and that's it for, for size by life. Now, one other thing that we're going to add, we're going to add light. Um, 
Now, this this light node's actually really cool because that's what gives it its um that's what gives it its unique appearance as it as it goes through the world. This is what illuminates the walls and stuff like that. So uh, use inverse square fall off. We're actually going to untick that one, and now you can see that that color is really pungent, and it actually, you know, it almost looks white hot at the, at the bottom there. And as it gets older, it's starting to to tail out into sort of like a, a dying flame. Um, and and just that uh, use invert um, turning the the fall off off um, really punches that out as you, as you can see there this is what we started with and then just by adding light now we've got that it's almost got a heart to it this flame and uh, I think that adds so much more of a uh, of, a, of an effect um, so one thing that we can change is the brightness of a life so obviously we want it to stop we want it to, to start burning white hot but then as it gets to the end of it of its of its life um, you know, we, we can set that to a constant curve um, and we can have two points, beginning of its life and end of its life. So at the beginning of its life, um, we can have that set to... Like 32. Um, i leave that as 32. And then at the end of its life, uh, we can have that set to zero, so it starts off as like a burning, a burning, <laughs> uh, a burning ball of fire, and then it sort of dulls out as it gets towards that end, um, and, that, and that adds a neat little thing. So as I've done those, as uh, I've changed the distribution from constant to a uh, curve, um, and then the points were set to zero. I've just pressed this plus uh, symbol twice, and that's added uh, a beginning and an end. You can add multiple, you can have it do all sorts of wacky stuff, um, but I've just got a beginning and an end. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Baked is ticked, uh, and the rest of these I don't think I changed. So th this is our sort of base um, emitter at the moment, um, but we wanna, we now want to add like some smoke to it and stuff like that, or a, a sort of like a, a burning core. You know, because whenever there's fire, there's always like smoke or soot that comes off. Um, so what we can do now is we can basically replicate this over uh, and just make some some edits. Um, I think we can can we copy this one? Duplicate. So there we go. We've duplicated this emitter. So most of the things are going to be already ticked for us. Um, you can see now like we've got double trouble on top of each other, but it looks a bit too much. So same again. What well, I'm just going, I'm just going to flick through, uh, through this. Um, so required's already set. Spawn. So because I'm actually going to be changing the size of this emitter uh, to be a little bit smaller, um, I want it to burn off a lot more than what's on fire. If that makes sense. So you know we're going to get to size last, unfortunately, but um, we're going to set this to 40 so I'm gonna want double the burning smoke um, the, the, you'll see how this this adds up in in a few minutes um, let's go to lifetime um, lifetime is gonna remain at one the initial size um, is gonna be a lot smaller so I'm gonna set this to 35 35 35 and then 25 25 25 so there is gonna be a bit of a variance here um, you can see all these little ones here in between. So you've almost got like this bubbling burning in, in the background. Um, and the, and the changing the colour to a darker colour is really going to make that look look amazing. Um, velocity, don't think I changed. Um, no, that remained the same. Colour over life. Now this is the one where it happens. Um, right, colour over life. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to set this uh, this red down to a really dark red now just so there's some a lot of darker tones within there um, almost pull that down a little bit more yeah you can see there's almost sort of, sort of like a bit of a smoky effect within there but like that almost gives us that sort of like the smoke is burning something um, and it's giving off that soot or that smoke and that's really it we're, just gonna, we're only going to change that down to be a little bit darker 
um, and size by life. Uh, okay, so the size by life is going to stay the same, and then light. Let's just double check the light. I believe this is going to stay the same as well. Yeah, that's going to that's going to stay the same. Um, right, and that's it. Now, one thing I have noticed actually as we've gone through it, um, th this is actually no longer meant to be bubbling up like that. Um, what we're actually going to do, we're actually going to set the velocity. Um, we're actually when we fire the vol when we fire the particle system, we're going to tell it to travel through the world, and th that's this is automatically going to trail, but we don't want it to trail upwards and the direction that it's going. So under the initial velocity, I actually skimmed past this, but um, the reason I didn't set it there and then is because you, you wouldn't get a feel for what it's going to look like when it's traveling, but we actually want to set this to 10. Um, so that's going to be like sat on top of itself. And for the velocity of the, the mini one as well, we're going to set that to 10. Now you're probably going to be thinking like, oh, well, well that looks like crap, but how it was just a second ago is what it's going to look like when it's actually in motion being fired from your character. Uh, and we've got we've got one more to do on top of this. We're going to add a smoke trail, a dedicated smoke trail. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this emitter, go to emitter and duplicate. Um, now for this one, almost everything's going to be the same, uh, the spawn's going to be the same, the lifetime's going to be the same, um, but the size is going to be different, the initial size. Um, uh, but actually, you know what, no, that's, that's it's, it's going to be fine, to be fair. Um, but I want it to be offset, actually. Uh, bear with me a second. I think I have missed something, to be honest. Let's go into the velocity. They are identical, so that's right. Uh, color of a life. This one's going to change. Uh, so for the color out, out um, for, for its start, it's going to be like a, a grey, a smoke. Uh, let's set that down to a light grey. And then it's going to end on a dark grey. Like this. So you've got like this black smoke in the middle. Um, and did I turn the light off for this one? Let's just change, check the size. Size is fine. And let's just double check the light. I think I actually set this one to a constant 32, so it's bright throughout. Okay, that's that's fine. Um, I just want to offset this one um, to the right a little bit, so it's always it's always always trailing. Um, and and to do that, if you go underneath the required, um, one of the emitter origin. Uh, sorry, <laughs> one of the um, requirements of the emitter is where does it start from and for the X we just want to put minus 50 and can we see that okay so it's actually behind it <laughs> there you go it's actually behind it um, and actually that light is well too bright so If I set that to zero, let, let me just turn the light off. That's well too bright for, for what I'm expecting. Hmm. Okay, it might it might be all right actually. Let, let's let's just leave it on. It just it looks it looks weird, but it might actually be the way that the bloody camera angle works in in this emitter. And and I think that's that's about it for this um, for this emitter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit save. And now we're going to link it to, to our character. So with that being said, just grab your character and open up the blueprint. So with it selected, you can either click edit or you can go through your contents folder. Go third person BP, blueprints and blue, uh, 
third person character. Really getting a dry mouth today. Um, yeah, so with that open, if you want to go to your event graph, now we're just going to need to set up a button to, to, to create this particle effect. Um, so now we want to create the, we actually want to create the, the fireball and send it across, across the world. Um, for this, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to do F key uh, to create an event. And I want to do a spawn actor. Now, if you've done emitters before, you might be thinking, no, you want to spawn an emitter. Now, that's not actually what I want to do. Because I want to be able to handle collisions and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my third person BP. I'm actually going to go back to my contents folder and go to my particles. And I'm actually going to create a blueprint class, an actor. And call it fireball. I tell you what, let's not call it that. Let's call it BP fireball. And then go into that. Now, for the default scene route, um, I actually want this to be a sphere collider. A sphere. No, <laughs> sorry. Uh, sphere. I'm rushing. Sphere collision. I'm conscious that my videos always get to like an hour point, um, but if I rush them, then I mess up. A sphere collision. I'm going to drag that over the default scene route because I want that to be the owner. And then I want to add a particle system within that. And that particle system is going to be the fireball. So there you can see you've got this fireball that as it travels let me see if I can get away with this no <laughs> it wasn't gonna work um, it's fine if I drag this into the scene it'll look miles better but you can see this this like little burning pile of blah, blah. anyway we've got a particle system in there um, now as we fire this through the world this is gonna trail I might be able to show you that actually now if I drag this in if we send it through the world, no, it won't, it won't do it. It's all right. Once we actually fire it, it'll look, it'll look a lot better. Right, so let's just delete that out of the world. Yeah, so we've got a sphere, and that's going to contain our um, particle system. And then, then with that, if you scroll down on the right, you'll have collision. So we can uh, simulate hits. And you can either overlap the, the everything or you can block. It's up to you. If you block, it'll hit something and it'll stay like against a wall until it dies. Or, um, you know, if you overlap, it'll go through everything. It's up to you how you want to handle that. I'll leave the collisions up to you, because uh, depending on your game, you, you know, it may. I, I don't know. The, the collision that you want might be something different. You might want it to go through stuff. Whatever. Um, yeah, and under fireball, if you click on the fireball at the top, there's a lifespan. Um, now, this lifespan, you you can pick whatever you want. Um, if you leave it at zero, it's just going to last forever, but I'm going to set mine to two, because uh, I don't want it. Because you, you could fire it, not hit anything, and it'll just carry on flying across the map for infinity, and you don't want that. If you set it to two seconds... Um, you know, you, you at least know then that it, you're not going to have a thousand fireball actors flying across your game permanently. Um, so that's a good little thing. And that, that's just, you have to click on the actual BP itself at the top there and search for lifespan. Um, and I think that might be it for the actor. Now, another another quick thing that we can do. Um, obviously with this sphere, if you select the sphere, because um, it's a collision, it will generate these collision events. Um, and what I want to do is, on begin overlap, I just want to do, i tell you what, uh, from the actor, I want to do an equals. And if that is going to be our player, so get player character. 
Ja. Go to a branch. So if we if we overlap something and it's not the player we want to destroy this actor. Hit compile. And I think that's about it. So hit save. Let's close that. So now in our third person character in our in our character um, when we press the F key uh, we're going to spawn this actor and now that it is an actor uh, let's go down to fireball oh it was BP weren't it BP fireball all we need to push in now is just where do we want to spawn it from uh, and that's really really simple to, to, to do if we go to the viewport just so we can see what we're about to do um, underneath your arrow, I guess, or anywhere really, you can add in a uh, sphere collision. Uh, it, there's absolutely no specific reason why I've gone for collision, but um, o other than the fact that it doesn't really interact with anything. Uh, drag that forward in front of your character. Let's set this to 0 0.5 across the board. Yep, just so it's a tiny little ball, and let's just pop it in front of your character. Um, yeah, that should be fine. And I'm just going to use that as a place to spawn, spawn the um, the fireball from. So now, if we go back to the event craft, we can actually grab this sphere, and we can say, get transform. Uh, Transform. I want the world transform. There we go. Uh, so get world transform, and that gives you your orange pin. You can plug that into there. Jobs are good. Um, and one other thing that you can do. So if your character's moving around, you might not want to be able to fire it until he stood still. Um, so what you can actually do is, if you hold B on your keyboard, that'll create a branch. Let's just chuck that in. So I'm going to say if the If his velocity is like zero, then he can fire it. Um, so I was just thinking of a way of doing that. So let's do. So because we're in the character itself, we can just type in get velocity, velocity, and that'll be self, target self. So get the velocity of this character. Um, if that is it going to be equal? Yeah. If that equals zeros across the board is true which means I'm stationary you can fire this um, yeah and I think for the most part that's gonna be it let's just let's just test that and then I'll figure out what I've forgot to do um, and if it works then we're good to go so I'm gonna press F so yeah okay so at the moment it's just stationary so that's fine, let me just figure out what I forgot and uh, I'll come back to you. Oh, that was quick and easy, weren't it? So, what, what I've actually forgot to do is under the BP fireball, um, I've not actually told this uh, fireball to go anywhere. Um, so, under your components, there's actually um, some movement systems, and one of them's a projectile. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Where is it? I'll tell you what, let's just projectile. So under movement, there we go, projectile movement. Add that in. And underneath it, um, on the right hand side, uh, under projectile, there's initial speed and max speed. If we set this to 800, and uh, 800, um, we've now given this speed. And do we want it to be affected by gravity? Nah, probably not. I want mine just to. I'll leave that up to you, but I, I don't want mine to. I might want mine to just fly straight across the world and not be affected by anything. And then just scroll down and make sure under your velocity it's set to X as 1, and that should make it go forward. So now if we go back into the game and we press F, you can see we've met a fireball. Um, and what's really great about this is 
because this all stems from this fireball texture if I was to import into my game this star shape if I was to import this star shape and if I was to go into my material fireball material um, open that up click on my texture and change this fireball to star and press save eventually it will save um, my textures and materials always take ages to to um, to save I guess it's saving and applying the changes across the board but great so because because that stems you can now see just by changing the texture I've changed somewhat the whole appearance of it um, now all you'd need to do is you could duplicate the fireball the material change the texture to a star shape and then go into your, your duplicated um, emitter like this and just change your color so we could change this to like a like a light blue and then ends with a a white or a or even a dark blue. Go to the color overlay for, for this one and do the same thing. Light blue and a dark blue and then color overlay for this one. So for this one you're not this is like this is effectively your smoke. You, you, you're not going to want that on here. So you, you probably want like a white and then almost like a bluish white let's save that let's just have a quick go um essentially what i've done here is i've, I've made a frost bolt well, look at that there you go you've got now a, a frost one and all i've done there is change the color and the uh and the texture if you will so obviously this is more effective for uh sort of search spells and stuff like that but one other thing to consider is if you go to your BP fireball this is literally just a particle system attached to an empty collider if you was to add in a static mesh let's say um, and change that static mesh to um, a cube uh, let's change the cube size down to 0 0.5. Um, actually, thinking about it, let's just stick this scale tool on. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's make it thin like that. And let's change its position to something like that. Something stupid. You can also change this sphere collider to a rectangle collider. In some respects, you could make a missile. Because I've got a static mesh, <laughs> I've got a static mesh with uh, with stars coming out the back, so that'd probably be better off if you left it with the flames one. Um, but just adding a static mesh and the particle effect together, you've made rockets. Um, but yeah, the possibilities are endless. Um, I'm conscious this video's already got too long because I rabbit on too much. But if this was of any use to you, please give me a like and a comment down below, that'd be great. Um, and if you like the content and you want to see more, consider subscribing. Um, I have now got a Patreon page, uh, which I'll link down below. Um, at the moment, this is just purely for uh, sort of like donations, just to help me out, help me buy a, you know some better equipment. Um, and just, you know, it, it will go towards making this, um, this, this channel you know better better for you guys you know I, i'll always put back in um i have also questioned the idea of doing some written guides you know putting some of these into um, a written format so you can sort of save them and use them offline um I, i've made a video about that so you can you can check my youtube channel and find my video about that and that, that explains why um yep um you can also find me on TikTok, which I'm going to start posting um, bits and pieces, uh, you know, maybe sort of like 
during the week what I'm working on um, or maybe some tips and tricks and stuff like that um, and yeah that's enough from me to be honest so yeah thank you for watching um, I guess I'll see you in another video so yeah thanks for watching and see you soon